The amendment. Amendment number 37, printed in Part B of House Report number 118-269, offered by Mr. Barr of Kentucky. Pursuant to House Resolution 847, the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Barr, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Kentucky. I, th I thank the, the speaker. Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my amendment would prohibit the Treasury Department from issuing license number 8H, which was issued by the Office of Foreign Asset Control on October 25th. It represents a fundamental policy shift in our approach to Russia and ending its aggression against U Ukraine. And this amendment is a recognition that the Biden Treasury Department's Russian oil price cap policy has failed. It is not curbing Moscow's war spending because the, ca the cap has proven unenforceable, especially outside of the G7. And Russian oil is trading well above the cap, funneling billions of dollars and, in fact, trillions of rubles into Putin's war machine. It is also a recognition that President Biden and climate czar John Kerry's climate agenda and war on American energy has come in direct conflict with our national security and our efforts to counter Russian aggression. Their climate policies have limited the tools available to them and pushed our country into pursuing a woefully ineffective price cap strategy in lieu, in, in lieu of closing the huge loophole they created for energy-related transactions in their sanctions on Russian banks. That's right, for the Americans watching on television who have been given an impression that President Biden is being tough on Moscow, the truth is they're allowing oil sales to finance the war. That is the Biden policy, to create a huge loophole for energy-related transactions that allows Putin to finance this war. License number 8H is an extension of authorizations by this administration going back to the very start of the war in Ukraine. It permits U.S. persons to engage in any transaction with sanctioned Russian financial institutions if the transaction involves Russian energy. This is the Biden administration's weak policy towards Russia. It includes not only Russian energy sales, but even production, refinement, and transport. Despite sanctions, again, on Russia's leading banks, including restrictions on the central bank, OFAC licensing, licensing has exempted dealings that support the most vital source of export earnings for Moscow. Why this administration punishes American energy but rewards Putin's energy is beyond comprehension. This is simply perverse. On the one hand, the Biden administration is greenlighting Russians' efforts to earn hard currency for its war machine, even as it asks Congress for billions of dollars to defend and reconstruct Ukraine. The left hand destroys while the right hand rebuilds. But somehow, the administration is stumped that this war grinds on without end. Had Biden continued the Trump administration's energy dominance strategy, he would not be as constrained as he is today, and global energy markets would be far less dependent on Russian oil and gas making a full embargo or sanctions without a general license far less painful for us and our allies. My amendment says enough is enough. If we want to help Ukraine, if we really want to help the Ukrainian freedom fighters, we have to end Russia's ability to wage war. And that means cutting off every avenue available for it to fund its hostilities. As the Wall Street Journal reported just this week, Russian tax revenues for oil and gas surpassed $17 billion last month, an increase of 25% from the previous year. These revenues are bolstering Moscow's abilities to threaten Ukraine, with the government planning to increase military spending by 70% next year. Under my amendment, the United States will not be complicit in these energy sales. It will ensure that sanctioned Russian banks are in fact sanctioned the loopholes that Russia has enjoyed for over a year, year, thanks to President Biden, will be closed. And we will send a signal to the world that turning a blind eye to Russian exports is over. At the same time, passage of this amendment must be viewed in the broader context of the administration's multilateral efforts to ensure the continued supply of Russian energy. Even if we close off the U.S. and its financial system from these transactions, the Treasury Department has convinced our European allies to roll back EU sanctions under a price cap scheme for oil. Treasury's own data has shown that the price cap still allows Russia to earn billions of dollars each month in oil sales. 
Moreover, with Ural's cr crude, crude prices rising, the World Bank recently concluded that the price cap, quote, appears increasingly unenforceable, unquote. The only way to counteract this trend will be to acknowledge once and for all that the war in Ukraine will not end until Russian energy dries up. That means enforcing sanctions, not rolling them back, and the first place to start is here at home with OFAC licensing. My amendment is an important step toward this goal. If you want to get tough on Putin, stop his energy exports. I urge my colleagues to support this measure and bring energy dominance back to the United States. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman's time has